In today's video, we'll be talking about what all things you should study if you have a high level system design interview coming up. So without wasting any time, let's get started. I'll be also talking about what exactly should you study in each topic. So stay tuned. For HLD interviews, you will have to do some calculations based on the data gathered from the interviewer. You might have to calculate the amount of data stored in your system based on which you can make some decisions of like which DP to use. So you should be thorough with your tables of powers of twos, powers of tens. You should be very used to the metric system like what is 1 million, what is 1 billion and trillion and also the relations between 1 KB, MB, GP so that you can approximate very quickly to the powers of twos and tens and you can do the calculations very fast because you will not have much time during the interview. So you should be used to do those calculations. So when you go through the examples, try to do the calculations, try to do the approximations very fast so that you get used to it. For designing a system, you should obviously know about REST API, HTTP, HTTPS, and you should know about all the HTTP methods as well, get, put, post, and when exactly which one is used. Sometimes interviewer might try to confuse you. In one of my interviews, interviewer really confused me between when will you use put or post in this particular API, what will you use? So you should be very clear about when to use what. When we study REST API, we actually go through client server architecture. Basically, client will send requests to server and server is going to fulfill it. But in real systems, when we design systems, a very, very common problem that is going to happen is how will server communicate to client without client requesting it. And this is a problem that happens in almost all the systems. So the next three points that we are going to be talking about are going to revolve around solving this particular problem. And it is extremely, extremely important. The first one that you should know about is WebSockets because this enables real-time communication. And think about any chat-based applications like WhatsApp, Slack. Now these are very common systems that are being asked in interviews, right? So for these, when communication has to happen real time, obviously a person chatting with another person is not going to send a request that, okay, send me a message, right? So how the communication is going to happen? It happens via web sockets. Also in systems where you have to show dynamic values which keep changing, like stock prices, you have to use web sockets. So you should know about how connection is built and how communication is happening. A lot of interviewers will love confusing you around this. The question will come like, how is server going to send this request or how is server going to send this data? So the answer to a lot of problems is going to be web sockets. I can't emphasize enough, you should know about this. Before we go ahead to the next point, let me tell you about the sponsor of the video. Scalar conducts free masterclasses on different topics related to HLD and LLD every week, which are hosted by engineers who have worked at top tech companies. You can see the examples on the screen and the links to these masterclasses are mentioned in the description. They are completely free and yet very insightful. Along with this, if you wish to enroll for a paid course which helps you master system design skills, you can enroll in a paid program like Scale Academy, which also covers system design topics in detail, including HLD as well as LLD, so that you can become a master in it. The program preps you for getting into top tech jobs at product and service companies by helping students crack these important system design rounds. Additionally, Scalar Academy program also provides features like end-to-end -end career and placement support, one-is-to-one -one membership, access to 20k plus student community. This program is suitable for students belonging to all categories, beginner, intermediate or expert. Moreover, Scalar has an exceptional placement rate of 93.52% with average hike of 126% in package and 21.6 LPA as average salary. So this definitely makes a scale as one of the best courses in the market for preparing to become a quality software engineer. Link for the paid program is also mentioned in the description box. Another way to send data from server to client is polling. Now in polling also you should know the difference between short polling and long polling. Basically in short polling, Within a fixed interval, client sends a request to a uh, server and server responds immediately. Whether new data is available or not available, it will respond immediately. In long polling, what happens is uh, client sends the request, but server waits until the new information is available or some data is being updated and then it sends the response. And again, immediately after receiving the response, client will again send the request that, okay, give me the new information now. So usually long polling is preferred because obviously less number of requests have to be made to get the same amount of data, but you should know the difference between them. You should be able to talk about it with your interviewer and depending upon the problem that you're dealing with, you should be able to suggest that, okay, we can use polling over here. 
In server sent events, a one way communication is built for server to be able to push data to client. Let me give you an example. When a social media app pushes data to user feed whenever a new post is available, so this can be used. Basically, whenever client doesn't need to communicate much with the server and client just needs to receive a lot of updates. So basically, real time data streaming can happen from server side. Obviously, while designing a big system, you should know about how to scale it. So you should know about horizontal and vertical scaling. What is the difference between them and when to use what? I know these are not very big topics, but these jargons are used a lot during interviews. So you should clearly know the difference between latency and throughput. Latency is the time taken to finish a certain operation. And throughput is the number of operations that you can finish in a certain amount of time. So you should clearly understand these and the differences between them so that you can use it without any mistake in the interview. This is probably one of the most important topics for a system design interview. If you have seen the roadmap video, you must have seen that we discuss about the trade-offs between consistency and availability in order to support partition tolerance. So. The CAP theorem states that you can't support all three together. So you should clearly understand what consistency means, what availability means, what partition tolerance means. And you should be able to understand by taking examples that, okay, that for this system, this should be more important. Whereas for other system, availability is more important or consistency is more important. So when you're going through examples, keep thinking about CAP theorem also. So in the interview also, you can take the discussion in the same direction by understanding the differences and by understanding the trade-offs between them. Again, for a big system, you should know about load balancers and not just what they are used for, but also how the load balancing happens. Now, it could be a simple round robin thing or it could be based on IP hashing or maybe you could be sending a request on the basis of least response time from servers or on the basis of which server has least number of connections. So you should know the different ways in which load balancing can happen and you should be able to discuss those with your interviewer and you should be able to explain that okay why you would choose a particular approach for a particular problem and not the other one. Discuss the pros and cons of each of them. If you have studied load balancers, you must be knowing about proxies because load balancers are basically reverse proxies. Now proxies are intermediary servers and it can be either forward proxy or a reverse proxy. You should know the difference between them. You should know that a forward proxy masks a client's identity, whereas a reverse proxy is on behalf of a server. Now it can be used for logging, caching or load balancing. But you should understand the differences between proxies. Now, this is again a jargon that will be used a lot during interviews. Since we're talking about distribution of traffic among the servers, whenever a particular server is added or removed, remapping has to be done in the hash table, right? So we have to make sure that minimum number of keys have to be remapped. For this, consistent hashing is used. It is an extremely, extremely important topic for system design. You should know this for sure before HLD interview. There might hardly be any HLD interview where SQL versus NoSQL discussion doesn't happen. So this topic is that important. In SQL DB, you should understand that what are asset transactions and you should know that, okay, it is based on tables. And NoSQL, obviously, you should know that it is based on uh, key value stores, on documents, on graphs and stuff like that. You should understand the differences between them properly. You should know when to use what, like depending on the situation, you should be able to choose. Like, for example, if your data is very structured and if you think you can do upfront uh, preparation, then you should go ahead with SQL. Whereas if you think that your data won't be as structured and you don't know from the starting, you will need some changes then you should use NoSQL DB. You should also discuss points like SQL DBs are vertically scalable, whereas NoSQL DBs are horizontally scalable. You should be able to compare the differences between them and you should know some examples of both SQL and NoSQL. Like examples of SQL DB are Oracle, MySQL, Postgres, and examples of NoSQL DB could be Cassandra, CouchDB, MongoDB. You should know a few of them and when to prefer what so that you can talk about it in detail. This is an extremely important topic for system design. 
you should also know about other storage types especially blob storage basically that is to store large binaries like images some other types of storages can also come into discussion sometimes for example if you are uh, dealing with a lot of location maps and all maybe you can consider having a quad tree there are some graph based uh, storages also available so basically just go through different types of storages so that you can discuss the different approaches during interview now indexing can be done on one or more columns in db now this is done to speed up the read process so while understanding the system with the interviewer you should be able to understand that okay for this system read is more important or write is more important because if you are doing indexing read will become faster but writes will become slower so you should understand the system and based on that you should talk about whether we should do indexing or not so like everything else this also depends on the situation but you should talk about this in big real systems obviously you cannot keep data only in one place you have to duplicate the data now it can be because of multiple reasons maybe if suppose failure happens in one particular region so you should have a backup so you could be doing replication because of that or you could be doing because you want to decrease the latency and you want to keep your data near to the client itself so you need to talk about these things about how you can do replication and why you should do replication another similar topic of discussion is sharding which is basically data partitioning so you should know about how you will make the shards and how are you going to partition your data again that will be very system specific like replication and sharding you must talk about caching this is basically to get data faster now you should know about terms like cache hit cache miss cache hit is basically when data is found cache miss is when data should have been found but it is not found so now that is based on your cache eviction policy you should know about different cache eviction policies also there is least frequently used there is least recently used uh, first in first out last in first out so you should know these cache eviction policies and you can discuss with your interviewer about things like why one particular type of cache eviction policy would be better for your system than the others and also if there are too many cache misses happening that means that we need to change the cache eviction policy so you should know things like these about your system properly message queues are basically to process messages asynchronously basically there is a sender there is a receiver and you want them to work independently so there is a middleman which is basically message queues so that these two work separately so you should understand the working of message queues properly so whenever there is some problem like this like bottleneck is happening or there are some requests that you can deal with later you don't need to deal with them immediately that is you don't need to deal with them synchronously in your system you can use message queues now these are not the terms that your interviewer is going to come and ask you what is this these are the terms that you should understand okay this is the solution to this problem so when you come across a problem in your system like okay i don't need to do this synchronously maybe okay the answer to this is message queues so with message queues you should also know about pub sub pattern now this is extremely famous pattern basically there is a publisher and there are subscribers so whenever some change in data happens on the publisher side so uh, this uh, basically events are generated on the subscriber side so for example some data is changed and you need to do a lot of actions on the basis of that so all the subscribers will be notified maybe notifications will be posted maybe logging will happen monitoring will happen a lot of stuff can happen so you should understand message queues and pub sub properly it is the answer to a lot of questions in system design rounds no matter how much ever great system we design there is always a chance of failure so we must always talk about fault and failure tolerance in real systems now there can be a lot of issues because of which faults can happen it could be because of hardware issues or software issues maybe we run out of memory or there was some human error so we should discuss this with our interviewer we should talk about resiliency only if we have ways to deal with failures we can actually provide availability right so to actually provide resiliency we should talk about replication and stuff so all these points are interrelated availability resiliency and replication it is just about understanding them so that you can discuss those with your interviewer 
in any real big system there is going to be a lot of data and there will be times where you will have to get that information and show it in your application right and take any application like even food ordering system you'll have to show the data right so you mm-hmm. can't get the entire data together so you need to have pagination and filtering in place filtering basically to make sure that okay you can filter out data maybe on the basis of location on the basis of rating i think that is self explanatory but you should also do pagination basically at a time you will show only certain amount of information like you will show only like 10 or 20 restaurants you're not going to display like thousands of restaurants together right so in your get request there is something called offset and limit basically starting from this offset i want this much amount of data from my api so whenever you're talking about getting a lot of information you should yourself talk about pagination and filtering most of the interviewers will expect you only to talk about it if we are talking about getting data don't wait for your interviewer to ask about it that is what system design is about and that is why this video is there so that you have these points in mind that okay i know these topics plus if a situation comes i should talk about these topics myself in big systems usually a sort of restriction is implemented on events happening like for example a particular request has to be fulfilled now there can be restriction on the basis of say number of uh, request that can come in a particular time limit or from a particular person or particular ip device so a lot of types of restrictions can happen so this is called rate limiting there are a lot of advantages to rate limiting it reduces your expenses it makes sure that your services are not overburdened it makes sure that there are no bot attacks happening so rate limiting is very important for big systems and you should talk about it. coming to the last topic you should know about logging and monitoring if you have some experience in logging and monitoring that is more than enough otherwise just read about what logging is what monitoring is and what actually happens so that if your interviewer talks about it you can discuss about it so these are all the topics that you should study for your system design interview in another video we have covered the thought process during the interview and how you can direct the interview this is for your interview preparation so we have covered both the things of before the interview and during the interview for high level system design do let me know in the comments if you found the video helpful and i am going to try to cover all of these topics in detail in this channel so please stay tuned and please do like share and subscribe you have no idea how much it will mean to me thank you so much